Tomorrow we get a new CPI report, and I, for one, am really excited to see what a good job that the government is doing fighting inflation. I mean, the government wouldn't lie to us, right? They would totally lie to us. According to the last report, the cost of food is only up 6%, assuming the store even has any. Well, the rent is only up 4%. Try 14%. And who cares if the average car now costs more than the median salary? Pretty much everybody. The good news is that the economy is strong and that wages are rising. So really, that just shows that inflation is a good thing. What's up, guys? I'm Nobody Special, and I have to apologize for my evil Keynesian twin. He drank a lot of the transitory Kool-Aid last year, and he just hasn't quite been right in the head ever since. But he's really a nice guy once you get to know him. Anyway, tomorrow we get the Bureau of Labor Statistics releases their CPI or Consumer Price Index report. This will give us the inflation reading for the month of January. And I want to take a look at the factors that have been driving these high inflation readings for the last few months to see if we can get an idea of where the CPI might come in tomorrow. Now, just to rehash, for the month of December, the CPI came in at 7% year over year or 0.5% month over month. And the main factors that have been driving these high reads lately have been energy, food, the price of new and used cars, and of course, the factor that the government has been absolutely lying to us about has been shelter and in particular rent. First, if you look at the price of food in December, according to the BLS, food rose only a half a percent month over month. Yeah, right. And that results in a 6.3% year over year increase in the price of food. And if you want to know what those prices might have done in January, just take a look at some of the pictures that have been posted in the Economic Ninja sub on Reddit. For the month of January, we saw pictures taken from all across the country and across the world showing bare shelves, in particular meat sections at supermarkets. And these are not one or two isolated cases. There have been dozens and dozens of these pictures posted throughout the month of January. That tells me food price inflation is going to come in at least as high as it was in December, if not a lot higher. Now, the other thing I would point out is that feeding into this food number is not just food at home, but also food away from home or restaurants. And we know that restaurants have been squeezed particularly hard by the supply chain, by the labor shortage, and by some of these restrictions imposed by the government. So I think food away from home is going to come in significantly higher also. So all in all, look for food to have a bigger impact on the inflation read for January than it did in December. We have not even begun to see what food prices are going to do in 2022. And food accounts for about 14% of the total index. And despite the rampant inflation in January, the price of the like button remains absolutely free. So why not inflate that like button and subscribe to my channel while you're at it? Moving on, one factor that actually had downward pressure on the CPI in the month of December was energy. Now, I don't know if you can recall, but remember, we had that big sell-off in energy during the month of November at Black Friday with the announcement of the new variant and the massive sell-off in oil and gas that happened just after that. So the result of that was energy prices actually came in at negative 0.4% month over month for December. Now, that was the month over month number because even though we had that big drawdown in energy prices back in December, we were still way, way higher than we were year over year. So we still had a 29.3% increase in the price of energy through the month of December. So to take a look at what energy has done through the month of January, let's start with oil. And looking at this chart, I put arrows at the beginning and end of January. And as you can see, oil marched up and to the right through the whole month of January, starting at about $76 a barrel for WTI crude on the first of the month and ending the month at about $88.50. So a big run in oil prices through the month of January. Let's take a look at natural gas. And again, we get about the same thing up and to the right, starting the month at $3.66 per million BTUs, ending the month at almost $5 per million BTUs. And gasoline, something most of you have probably noticed lately, starting the month at $2.22 a gallon, and by the end of the month, $2.56 a gallon. So any way you look at energy, gasoline, oil, natural gas, energy has gone significantly higher for the month of January. So month over month for energy, we are going to see a big move. And that means we're going to see an even bigger move in those year over year numbers. And again, those year over year numbers were already incredibly high. And energy accounts for about 7.5% of the total index. Now, one factor that's had a big impact on the inflation numbers for the last few months has been new and used car prices. And we may actually get some relief in that category for the month of January. First, let's start with new vehicles. In the month of December, they were up 1% month over month, and that gave us a whopping 11.8% year over year number. Well, even though these prices remain at historical highs, we actually didn't see much price growth in the month of January. Now, that's not much relief to somebody who's trying to buy a new car and they get to the lot and they find, oh my goodness, the price of a car now exceeds the average annual salary in this country. But for the month of January, new car prices did not rise significantly. 
So we should see a much lower month over month number, if not a zero month over month number for new vehicles, possibly even negative. But year over year, we're still comparing to January of last year, we're still going to see a pretty high number. So look for that year over year number to come in a little bit lower, but still pretty high. And we're seeing the same thing for used cars. Here, take a look at this chart of the Mannheim used car price index. Now you'll notice the index has leveled off through the month of January. Now back for the December numbers, the used cars came in at 3.5% month over month. That's a huge month over month gain and a whopping 37.3% year over year. So what does that mean? We're probably going to see a month over month number that is either zero or just barely positive, but still a very high year over year number, probably still in the 30%. Now the index for transportation counts for about 8% of the total index. Now the one number that I have been pounding the table on all year has been rent and in particular owner's equivalent rent. And this is the main instrument that the BLS uses to manipulate the inflation numbers lower. At best, this statistic is intellectually lazy and accurate. At worst, it's an outright lie. Now, if you'll notice the index for shelter month over month for the month of December was only 0.4% higher and year over year, 4.1% higher. Ask anyone in any city, anywhere in the United States, what their rent did in 2021, and they will give you a number much, much higher than 4.1% increases. But I have no reason to suspect that January will be the month where the BLS suddenly decides they're going to tell the truth about the rent number. So since this number is total BS, there really is no point in spending too much time analyzing this part of the statistic because it is worthless. But I will leave you with this one data point. According to Redfin, the average rent increase across the entire United States was 14% in 2021, a full 10% higher than the government is telling us. So with all that being said, right now the market is calling for an identical 0.5% month over month CPI with the year over year number increasing to 7.3%. Now that is the average of analyst survey. Now with those expectations, it's important to talk about what happens if the numbers come in higher or lower. And right now, all attention is on the Federal Reserve and on their pace of tapering asset purchases and quantitative tightening and interest rate hikes. If the inflation number comes in significantly higher than expectations, that means the Fed could get more aggressive and we could see investors panic. That would drive your stocks much lower and that would drive your bond yields much higher as bond traders try to front run a more aggressive Fed hike schedule. The flip side to that coin, if the inflation number comes in significantly lower than that 7.3% estimate, that could be very good for stocks because that would give the Fed a little breathing room and they wouldn't have as much pressure to hike so aggressively. That would be very good for stocks. And again, we may see the bond traders front running a less aggressive Fed so we could see yields coming down a little bit. So what do you guys think the CPI is going to come in at? Give me your best guess at that year over year number down in the comments below. And if you want to know more about the Fed's tightening schedule, you can check out this video that I did about the Fed's taper and how they're behind schedule and they need to get more aggressive if they want to meet their own timeline. Guys, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Until next time, live small and dream big.